Hi everybody, uh, I'm Steve Lombardo with the Gibson's Restaurant Group. Uh, what a gorgeous day to reopen the city of Chicago. Thank you Mayor Lightfoot for choosing this place for today's press conference and thank you for your leadership. It's been a long and difficult 15 months with a lot of pain and suffering. Our industry like many has faced challenges and hardships like never before. A lot of restaurants closed during this and a lot more wouldn't be open without the assistance provided by the government. Restaurant workers were particularly hit hard in this pandemic. These guys didn't get to work from home. That is if they were able to work at all. But these guys are also some of the toughest people I know. Restaurant workers like Chicagoans are tough and resilient. We've survived and Chicago has survived thanks to no, no small part to the mayor and her team. The spirit of Chicago is tough and resilient. The toughness and resilience of our frontline workers and our first responders help carry us through all of this. 
We are so excited and happy today to be open and to get back to doing what we do best, which is making good food and serving our customers. Finally, Mayor Lightfoot, if you or any of your team get bored with your current jobs, we are hiring. So thank you and God bless. And with that, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Steve. And thank you everyone for being here. Uh, we are here to announce reopening day in Chicago. <clears throat> With this announcement, Chicago is the largest big city in the country that's fully reopened. Let me recognize the other leaders that are here with us today. Chicago Department of Public Health Commissioner Dr. Allison Arwady, uh, Department of Public Health Director Geraldine Luna, <clears throat> Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection Commissioner Rosa Escarino, Ray's Senior General Manager Greg Gossel, CFL Labor President Bob Ryder, Illinois Restaurant Association President Sam Toya, Illinois Hotel and Lodging Association President and CEO Michael Jacobson, uh, BOMA, the Business Owners and Management Association of Chicago President Ferenc Barang, Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce President and CEO Jack Lavin, and as you can see, an array of other business, healthcare, and union leaders and workers who are also here with us today. This time last year, our city was in a very different place, and it's been 15 months since COVID first came to our city, wreaked havoc on nearly every aspect of our lives and forced us to grapple with feelings of fear, loss, grief, unlike anything we'd ever experienced before in our lifetime. Armed with more knowledge about this disease, as well as a robust testing, contract tracing uh, system, we were able to start reimagining what a post-pandemic Chicago could look like and take steps toward making that vision a reality. One of those steps was a shift into phase three a year ago, which allowed us to cautiously reopen some of our businesses and meet others while staying six feet apart with a face covering. That shift gave us tremendous hope and momentum. But it would be a many more months uh, of difficult months before those glimmers of light turned into full-blown flood of light, which powered the arrival of vaccines in our city in December of 2020. Residents of Chicago for the past year and some change have endured so very much. But at every step of the way, you still make sure to do your part and stop the spread of this deadly disease. You masked up, you got vaxxed up, and now it's time for you to get up, get out of the house this summer and fully and safely and enjoy the events of the best city on the planet, our beloved city of Chicago. We're here today to announce that Chicago is officially fully shifting into phase five, our reopening strategy, which fully opens our city and provides an exciting opportunity for residents and visitors to get back to the things that they love before the pandemic hit. There's no better place to be in summertime than the city of Chicago. And as Dr. Arwady and Commissioner Escarano will explain in more detail in a moment, this shift to phase five means four important things. First, for the first time in over 450 days, businesses can operate without COVID-19 guidelines, meaning capacity limits gone, mass mandates not mandatory, and social distancing requirements lifted. Second, unvaccinated people should still wear masks and socially distance as much as possible. But folks, get the vaccine. It's widely available, it's free, and it's safe. Third, masks will still be required in certain locations per federal guidelines and requirements. These settings include healthcare, public transportation, correctional facilities, shelters, and schools. And fourth, now some businesses may decide to keep stricter regulations and they're entitled to do that. Thanks to this phase five shift, I'm also proud to announce um, that we will add to our growing list of firsts and become the first major city to reopen, as I said. Chicago, the famed second city, will now be the largest big city in the, in the country to fully and safely reopen. This accomplishment is undoubtedly thanks to our residents, 
to those of you who are listening for making the sacrifices that were necessary over this long, dark, difficult period, as well as many of the leaders that you see standing with me today and the workers across our city. It builds on a number of firsts that we've accumulated over the past year that I want to remind folks of again, because we can't be Midwest shy and modest. We've got to tell and own our Chicago story. We were the first city to publish an economic recovery plan detailing our pathway out of the pandemic. We did that a year ago, folks, and we are executing on that plan. We have the highest vaccination rate among adults, and we've done it with the most equitable vaccine distribution uh, system of any major city in the country. We have the lowest unemployment rate at the t in the top four cities in the country. And we have the highest consumer spending growth throughout the pandemic of the top 20 cities. And another thing that I'm extraordinarily proud of, over this pandemic, we've had 32 companies relocate to Chicago. Companies that could go anywhere in the planet, but they chose our great city because of the strength of who we are. That's a major accomplishment and more coming. And when it comes to critical sectors of our economy, we've seen more accomplishments to tell. We're the largest food and beverage distribution manufacturing sector in the country. We've allocated over $100 million <clears throat> to small businesses in grants and loans. And we've launched a regional marketing campaign to support tourism, which has reached over 3 million people already. And speaking of tourism, our city's airports have seen rebounding travel numbers. Over Memorial Day weekend, for example, O'Hare expected to see an increase of over 550% compared to the same period last year, and Midway over 400%. And the number of des domestic uh, destinations served from Chicago is now at the same level as it was before the pandemic. Furthermore, open table data tells us that this past weekend, restaurant reservations have nearly returned to pre-pandemic levels. And when comparing data to April 2020 to April 21, uh, 2021, our hotel occupancy numbers have nearly tripled. Our transit system has seen a huge comeback in ridership. Over Memorial Day weekend, uh, the estimated ridership on CTA was 4.2 million uh, passengers, the highest since the outset of COVID and more than 80% higher than Memorial Day of 2020. In April 2021, Divi ridership over, is over three times up from where it was a year ago. So the bottom line here, folks, is our city is back. We are po poised to roar back to provide more business, more opportunity, and importantly, more jobs to Chicagoans. And as our city, city fully reopens today, all of these accomplishments, uh, it only is only right that we get back to our residents who have made this moment possible. So, can I have the... Uh, can I have the... That's why we're here today to announce our new partnership with Ray's Marketplace and World Business Chicago. We're going to be giving away hundreds of $250 gift cards to thank local business owners, healthcare professionals, frontline workers, and the rest of our residents. So what you need to look for is this. These are going to be at businesses and locations in all of our 77 neighborhoods. And if you're the one who walks in and says, open Chicago, you will get this $250 gift card that will be waiting. From today through July 4th, these gift cards will be distributed in every neighborhood in the city to encourage people back and to support our local businesses this summer. These gift cards can be used on Ray's Marketplace and more than 4,000 brands, many of which are businesses based right here in Chicago. It's another way we're saying thank you to our residents for partnering with us on some of our, um, is that we're going to also open up our uh, iconic museums to late night hours tonight. DeSabo, Field, MSI, the Puerto Rican uh, Arts and Culture Museum, and the Shedd Aquarium will all be open late tonight as a way to say thank you to our residents and your, your efforts in saving lives. I hope that everyone tuning in right now will take advantage of these and other opportunities. Our arts and culture community is back. We're going to start seeing plays and music and other forms 
of arts and culture that enrich the fabric of our city. That's all happening this summer. So I want to thank everyone again for doing your part, for enduring incredible hardship, but standing tall as we always do as Chicagoans. We are strong, we are resilient, and we are back. And with that, I'd like to welcome CDPH Commissioner Allison already up to say a few words. Doctor. Thank you, Mayor Lightfoot. Uh, I am so excited to be standing here today. There are way too many people to thank individually. Folks have stepped up across the entire city to get us here. But I do particularly want to give thanks to Mayor Lightfoot, uh, who has ensured that science and public health guidance has been at the center of all of the difficult decisions we've made over 15 months and more. You all are used to me getting up here and giving warnings and showing bad graphs and giving uh, numbers and making people worry more about COVID. Today, I am sharing good news. We have the fewest number of COVID cases in Chicago that we have had since the beginning of the pandemic. We have the lowest percent positivity that we have had since the beginning of the pandemic. We have the lowest number of hospitalizations of people in the ICU, of people in ventilators than we have had since the beginning of the pandemic. We have made that progress while turning the dial on reopening. And with that, we're turning it all the way open today. The good news is we're going to continue making progress if we keep getting vaccinated. I do not want to have to get back up here and start talking about numbers moving in the wrong direction. And the way we don't have to do that is by getting more folks vaccinated. So as part of our Thank You Chicago, I do want to announce some additional Protect Chicago Music Series. As a reminder, Protect Chicago Music Series offers opportunities for fully vaccinated Chicagoans to get free tickets to music events. We want to announce on July 1st, there will be a Protect Chicago Music Series concert at Chicago State University. It will be featuring artists from Save Money. And if you don't know who Save Money is, your kids do. They are one of the most popular hip hop uh, groups in the country that has come out of Chicago. We'll be announcing the full details of that lineup next week. So if you wanna guarantee yourself a ticket to that to that concert for free on July 1st. You can sign up to get a vaccine at Chicago State University this coming Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. You do need to sign up in advance. You can go to chicago.gov slash COVID vax to find the details under Protect Chicago Music Series. Secondly, I want to announce that thanks to the organizers of Lollapalooza, in partnership with the City of Chicago, we will be distributing 1,000 free one-day Lollapalooza passes. Again, for people who are vaccinated. So if you want to get yourself the best chance to get that, uh, to get to get one of those passes, go to the website chicagogovernor slash covidvax and on Saturday, June 26th, we'll be turning four of our City of Chicago sites into a Lollapalooza experience. Each will be featuring DJs spinning music, custom Lollapalooza giveaways, and then each of the sites will offer a pass to a different day of the music festival. We'll be pairing this with a concert uh, that you'll be hearing some more details about at the House of Blues. Uh, they'll also be sponsoring uh, one of the Lala artists. This is all good news, and I'm going to turn it over now to Rosa Escareño, the Commissioner at Business Affairs and Consumer Protection, to put a little more detail on it. But I just want to end by saying, we've gotten this far through vaccine. Please, 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 if you haven't done it yet, now's your chance. Thank you. Sorry. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Arwady. Um, my name is Rosa Scareño. I'm the commissioner for the Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection. And I just want to echo uh, what's already been said. I cannot thank the, every member of ACT here, uh, all of our partners who have really, truly stepped up throughout the entire past 15 months to keep Chicago moving forward under the 
worst time in our recent history. So thank you to all the association organizations, my colleagues. Um, they are sick of hearing from me in my office about all the changes that they had to endure during this very difficult time. And I just want to say to Mayor Lightfoot and Dr. Arwady, love them to death, but I am really done with these updates. And I hope, I hope that we continue to meet under very different circumstances. And I think based on what Dr. Arwady has indicated, we are on the path to, to definitely being and staying open. So yes, we are at phase five and Chicago is open for business. So please get out and support every business across our city. They need you more than ever. Many have suffered throughout the entire, um, you know, past 450 days. Um, there's been a lot of, you know, headache, a lot of heartbreak. We've seen some businesses, um, you know, close. Few, um, uh, you know, and few will stay. Um, many have will stay closed, but so many more will be open. I mean, we're standing right in, in in front of an amazing restaurant, and behind us, all the commerce in Chicago makes Chicago a top destination for tourism. So we have to get our workers back. And yet again, for the workers here, I just want to say, the essential workers got us through this moment. And under um, Mayor Lightfoot's um, leadership, we have put together protections in place for our workers uh, during the pandemic, but before and moving forward, workers in Chicago are a priority. Uh, this is a worker city, and we want workers back. The businesses need you back in order to be able to succeed. So today, uh, there's been many sacrifices, uh, but today is a wonderful day. We encourage everybody, please support your local businesses in the neighborhoods, in the local corridors, the beauty shops, the local markets, the farmers markets, the, you know, the, the, the go shopping for jewelry. Please just make sure that you're supporting your businesses. And just mayor, uh, the mayor already uh, touched on some of the um, phase five um, guidelines that are now in place as a result of going into phase five. So I will just make it, um, take a minute to explain. Again, most businesses can uh, now operate without COVID capacity limits, social distancing or mass mandates. So those are for the most part completely gone. And then now you can uh, enjoy all the liberties of being at the gym, um, you know, being at the restaurant and shopping. Uh, but we do ask that you as the consumers respect the policies implemented by the businesses. Businesses can, uh, if they choose, require mask wearing inside those businesses. We ask you to please honor that. Uh, they're doing that for the safety of their workers, the safety of their patrons, uh, and to ensure that we continue the path of recovery. Um, many uh, businesses, again, will continue to require masks. Um, unvaccinated individuals should still wear masks indoors and, um, and where social distancing is not possible, um, that's where mask wearing uh, should is still strongly uh, um, suggested. Many businesses um, will have posting of signage as to what their individual policy is. And so again, if there is no mask wearing, we know many businesses, bars, taverns have imposed their own requirements to have vaccination. We strongly encourage that, especially as we hit the end of this month. So thank you all for continuing to stay firm. Our department will continue to keep the businesses notified as to um, all the additional requirements. The final thing I'll say on mask wearing is that for uh, individuals that will be in taxis and ride shares and in public transportation, the masks are still required. Again, this is uh, part of the policy across public transportation to protect the drivers and the patrons in very close quarters. So again, I want to just say thank you to everyone, all my partners here today who are now going to get a chance to speak. You have been amazing. It's because of all of your help that Chicago has been able to reach this level. Um, and so now I'll just take a couple minutes to say my comments in Spanish before the next speaker comes. Buenos días, mi nombre es Rosa Escareño, soy la comisionada del Departamento de uh, Asuntos Empresariales y Protección al Consumidor. Me da mucho gusto acompañar al alcalde Lori Lightfoot y a la doctora Arwady en este gran día de apertura a todos nuestros negocios. La fase 5 uh, finalmente ha llegado. 
y como todos, uh, como todos los empresarios estamos muy orgullosos y estamos muy emocionados de que todos van a poder abrir uh, y, sin los reglamentos que han existido uh, en los últimos 15 meses. Le quiero dar las gracias a todas las empresas, a todos mis colegas, a todas nuestras, las personas que han trabajado, ayudarnos a todos a llegar a este momento en el cual los trabajadores esenciales pueden continuar su trabajo. Y quiero dar las gracias a todo ese trabajador que fue a trabajar mientras la gente estuvo en sus casas y que puso sus vidas en peligro y que... Gracias a, a todos esos trabajadores, esta ciudad es más fuerte hoy que antes. Gracias a todos los eh, empresarios. Y solo uh, brevemente, permítame un momento para explicar lo que significa la fase 5. Nuevamente, la mayoría de las empresas pueden operar sin límite de capacidad de COVID-19, así como distanciamiento social y los mandatos de máscaras. Por la mayor parte, todo eso uh, no va a estar eh, este, vigente. Desde hoy todos pueden disfrutar el gimnasio, pueden salir de compras, pueden ir al restaurante, pero si ese negocio tiene una póliza de que ellos requieren la, masquia, la máscara para entrar y estar en ese negocio, les pedimos que por favor cumplan y respeten los deseos de esas pólizas. Este, eso es consistente con mucha de la guía de los uh, profesionales de salud. Y muchas empresas uh, van a seguir con la máscara y por favor hay que respetar eso. También las máscaras se van a seguir requiriendo en los taxis y en los, uh, en, en los viajes compartidos, así como de ride share. Por favor uh, sigan esos reglamentos. Y muchos negocios, eso es como del alcohol, todavía hoy y en el futuro van a requerir que la máscara se siga utilizando hasta que salgamos hasta el fin del mes. Las personas que no están vacunadas deben de usar las máscaras en el interior y debe de no uh, de estar uh, 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 adquiriendo a la, a la distancia social. Y finalmente, um, muchas personas pueden seguir, tienen que seguir usando las máscaras si no están vacunadas. Por favor, uh, vacúnense hoy en día. Y con eso le doy las gracias a todo el mundo. Y Chicago está abierto. Gracias. And now, uh, let me bring Gregory Grossman, Senior General Manager at uh, Ray's Marketplace. Greg? Thank you. Good morning. I'm Greg Gossman, uh, Senior General Manager at Ray's Marketplace. We're the local Chicago startup behind the Slide and Ray's uh, mobile payments apps. We're very honored to announce our partnership today with Mayor Lightfoot, the city, local business organizations as well as local businesses to give back to the community and to give people in the community who have helped us get through this pandemic a $250 gift card uh, for use at over 4,000 uh, restaurants, shops, um, and retailers uh, all throughout Chicago. Uh, part of what Ray's is, is Chicago born and bred. Uh, we started here based on wanting to be part of the growing Chicago tech scene and a wonderful wealth of talent uh, in the city. So it's with uh, great pleasure that we announce our partnership for Thank You Chicago uh, with Mayor Lightfoot, her team, and the whole city. Uh, we are here and we are helpful uh, with you guys and we want to make sure that we're giving everybody a uh, $250 gift card as you find them to encourage spending and getting out and doing things in the city as we now uh, pass phase five. Thank you, everybody. I gotta tell you, there's so many great reasons to be here today. My name is Bob Ryder. I'm president of the Chicago Federation of Labor. One of the things that's great about being here today is all the noise that I have to speak about because people are working behind us, right? They're building buildings, they're out there on the streets, and it feels like the city is humming again. And like I said, my name is Bob Ryder. I'm president of the Chicago Federation of Labor. On behalf of the CFL's 300 affiliate unions, who represent half a million working women and men here in Chicago and Cook County. I'm proud to be here today to represent those working people and thank them for their sacrifice during this crisis. That's right. Today is a new beginning, a giant step out of the darkness of the pandemic toward a brighter, stronger future for our city. This past year has been incredibly difficult, 
union members and all of Chicago's workers have sacrificed their lives and their livelihoods every day of this crisis, either by risking their health on the job or being forced to stay home without a paycheck. Those in the hospitality, entertainment, and convention industries have been hit especially hard as our vibrant tourism industry came to a complete stop. And you may not know this, but I know this, I have a lot of experience with it. You go to that building that's on Lakeshore Drive. It started out between Lakeshore and the lake, migrated its way across, across the drive. That is the largest convention center in North America because the convention business was born here in the city of Chicago. But despite everything that we've been through here in this city, no matter what, Chicago can always count on its union women and men to do whatever it's necessary to keep our city strong. I've said this countless times, and I'm gonna say it here again today. We owe Chicago's workers a debt of gratitude that may never be repaid. So today we say in one voice, thank you. Now comes the hard work of not just rebuilding our city's economy, but building a stronger, more vibrant, more resilient city that works for everyone. If this crisis has taught us anything, it's that the most essential workers in our community are not the ones with the big paychecks. It's time that our city reflects that reality and stands behind those who keep Chicago running every single day. And as we recover, we must find ways to support these workers, especially the essential workers of the pandemic with stronger protections on the job, better wages and benefits and safer neighborhoods. Chicago's labor movement is ready to get to work to not just get our city back to the old normal before the pandemic, but to build a city that is stronger than ever before. And today is not an ending, but a beginning, a beginning of a new, stronger, fairer, more resilient Chicago. And I gotta tell you what, I'm going to concerts this summer. I am going to restaurants. I'm going to the auto show. I'm going to C2E2 and I'm even not only just going to go see my favorite team on the south side play baseball, but I'm even today going to going to Wrigley Field and I'm going to leave my I'm going to leave my White Sox hat at home and I'm not going to go to Lids and buy a Cardinals hat. I'm going to go and be a friendly city and support all the people who are working on the field and the people working in the grandstands to make sure that we signal that today is a new day. And today it's time to get to work and work together. Now, coming up next to speak is Melanie Barnett Stuberfield, who is a stagehand from uh, the IATSC Local 2. And she's got some experience. I mentioned McCormick Place. Melanie's worked at McCormick Place and various other venues across the city. And I think it's time for us to hear from one of Chicago's workers. So come on up, Melanie. Hello, hi, my name is Melanie Barnett Stubberfield, as Bob just mentioned, and I am a, a union member. I've been in this industry for almost 30 years. I started from theater, I worked in television, I've done concerts, I've done corporate events, and oh my God, when this happened, I couldn't believe it, you know? Uh, this has been very challenging and traumatic. And through the help and assistance of Mayor Lightfoot and my business agent behind me, Craig Carlson, and we got through it. And I am grateful and um, I'm just excited. So what all I want to say to Chicago is let's get back to business. All right. All right. <clears throat> Happy to take any questions. I'm sorry, we're going to go here first, and then we'll get you the microphone so I can actually hear you. Hi, <clears throat> Mayor. Um, the Illinois House and Illinois Senate is headed back into session. They will vote on an elected school board bill. This morning you said on WGN that that would threaten Chicago's <clears throat> the future of Chicago's children. What are you saying to lawmakers to get them to reject the bill passed by the Senate a few weeks ago? Well, what I'm saying is we need more time to make sure that when we do this change, and the change will come, that we do it in a way that first and foremost supports our children who have been through a very, very difficult time, 
with the remote learning. <clears throat> we do it in a way that empowers parents and gives them an actual seat at the table and that we continue the progress that's been made since mayoral control um, happened 20 plus years ago. So that's a discussion. So whatever happens next week, that's a point in a longer journey, uh, but we're hopeful that we will actually get to a negotiated resolution. And then will you commit to an up or down vote by the city council on whether to rename Outer Lakeshore Drive for Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable, or will you use your power as mayor to prevent that vote from taking place since you don't support it? Here's what, I, what I've heard from residents all over the city. A lot of them don't want the name to be changed. Lakeshore Drive is iconic, and it's something that um, no matter where you are in the country, when you talk about Lakeshore Drive, you'll hear them. The process has obviously needs to play itself out. Obviously, I don't support uh, the name change, but we're going to keep working in good faith with members of the city council. Hi there, how are you? Good, good morning, Mayor. Um, I think we're all really excited to be here today without masks yeah. talking to you, but is there also um, and this is a question for Dr. Arwadi as well as for you. Mm -hmm. Is there also a sense of nervousness that as we get back to this 100% capacity, no masks, no social distancing in most settings, that those areas of the city that have not had the same levels of vaccination than let's say the downtown area and the north side are going to suffer new outbreaks and we may have to move backwards again. Well, I'll start and then I'll bring uh, Dr. Artie up. Look, the, the, the uh, pandemic is not over. COVID is still very much part of our present. As you heard the doctors say, we're at historic lows in every one of the metrics uh, that we track. But we know that people are still dying every day from COVID. We know pieces of our city to have not seen the uptake in vaccines, particularly on our south side. We haven't stopped. We are not going to stop. We're literally sending out teams of folks to go door to door to bring people into vaccine uh, protection. We're going to continue to do innovative and um, mobile uh, efforts to get people vaccine. As the doctor described, we're doing incentivizing uh, efforts uh, across the city with these music um, concerts and, and other things because what we know for with a certainty through all of this darkness that we've been through, the vaccine will save lives. It will absolutely save lives. That's why we've been talking about the vaccine since we got first access to it in December of last year, but we've got to bring more people into coverage. It protects them, it protects their household, their loved ones, and their neighbors in the entirety of the city of Chicago. So our work is not over. We've got to keep pushing hard, and we will continue to do that. Doctor? over to be very clear and we've been following a lot of metrics uh, obviously if you want to take a look at what's going on in your neighborhood related to covid go to chai.gov slash covid dash you will see that we continue to diagnose covid cases in almost every zip code of the city almost every week that said when we look by neighborhood, when we look by race, ethnicity, when we look by age group, we have seen these really significant improvements in all of those groups. The city is at a 1.4% positivity, the lowest that we've ever been. But even if you look by race, ethnicity, even just within black Chicagoans or Latinx Chicagoans, it's in the two point you know, plus range, under 3%, uh, the best control that it's ever been. And we've seen week over week drops in cases across even the subgroups uh, within age and race ethnicity. I am concerned that if we were to see a COVID resurgence, it would land, as you note, in unvaccinated communities and unvaccinated social networks. We're at a point now with only 79 new cases on average per day that the risk is quite a bit lower for everybody. Uh, but I think if we were to see later in this fall or winter, perhaps a seasonal version of 
this. Uh, COVID coming back more when the winter uh, comes, like we see for flu, like we see for colds. That would be my concern, and we may need to do some additional double down at this point. We've generally seen this go reasonably well uh, when there has been vaccine available, including across the U.S. I think where you look internationally and you've seen some of this resurgence, it's been in countries that have had very, very little vaccine available. We're not done vaccinating, but I'm very confident, again, that now is the time to move ahead with that reopening, but we got to keep get, getting people vaccinated uh, because it won't hold it back forever. So one, yeah. one other thing before the doctor leaves, just to put a final point in this, what is it, 97% of the people who have died recently are unvaccinated. So it's proof positive that vaccines truly will save lives. So we've just got to get more people vaccinated. And as I said, we are going to be unrelenting in driving vaccine to those zip codes, to those blocks where we know more needs to be done. Yeah, and just to put it even, it's even better than that. 97% of the people who have been hospitalized with COVID since a vaccine has been fully available, and 98% of the people who have died from COVID since a vaccine was available were not fully vaccinated. So uh, hospitalizations and deaths are under very good control if people get their vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no question here? Okay. All right. So one other thing before I leave the podium, there are a couple people that I neglected to thank. First of all, um, the Lombardo family. Um, they have been terrific partners. Uh, they have really led on protecting their workers uh, with uh, making sure that their restaurants are safe. So I see Steve Sr. in the background, but Steve, I just want to say thank you so much. Uh, Rob Carr is here uh, from the Illinois Retail and Merchants Association, also been tremendous partners with the city working hard with us to make sure that the small business and, and large business perspective is at the heart of everything that we've been doing um, with our vaccines. I also want to thank Michael Fasnock, who is a new uh, CEO of World Business Chicago, and thank you for the generosity of WBC in making uh, these $250 uh, gift cards available. I also want to thank uh, the team in the mayor's office and across the city. These are the unsung heroes of city government as well. They have been through a tremendous amount every minute of every day that COVID has been here. They're supporting me and Dr. Arwady and our partners across city government. Rose's team has been tremendous. City workers are working their tails off and also making great sacrifice to get things done. So I want to also give a shout out and thank uh, those workers, particularly the frontline workers, uh, and you know who you are, that have never been home. They've never worked remotely. They've come to work every single day to deliver for the residents of the city. We owe them a debt of thanks as well. Thanks, everyone. Happy reopening day.